Oh shit, multiple words. How you just described yourself? No, smooth was slimy. A judge denied bond for 21-year-old Lontrell Williams, known as Poo Shiesty. Police say he was performing at King of Diamonds in Miami over Memorial Day weekend when cash was knocked out of his pocket. When the crowd tried to grab it, police say he showed off his gun, and while he was being escorted out of the club, he fired a shot, hitting the guard in the ankle. He's been charged with aggravated battery. After pleading guilty to a gun charge in Miami federal which I see was facing up to eight years for that because he did take a plea and today he was actually sentenced to 63 months in prison for you slow ones. Hey yo squad, what's the drill? Back with another video, man. You know Pooh Shiesty has had quite the past couple years. He went from being just another kid on the streets of Memphis to one of the biggest names in the hip hop industry. His growth had everybody stunned, but then again, he also backed it all up with his insane skills. With it, he proved that he belonged on the Billboard charts, but then everything came plummeting down as his constant run-ins with the law caught up with him. Now Pooh Shiesty is all set to spend five years behind bars, and well, there's a lot of chatter about how things will be when he gets out. In this video, we're going to be doing a complete rundown of what went down with Pooh Shiesty, how he ended up in prison, and how likely it is he will still have a career once he's out. So without further ado, let's skip the play play and get down to business. Before we get into Pooh Shiesty's arrest and all, we have to dial it back to where the guy first popped off at. Pooh Shiesty was born Lontrell Danelle Williams Jr. on November 8, 1999. He was born and raised in Memphis, Tennessee, and lived there for 16 years before momentarily moving to Texas. After spending two years in Texas, he realized that Memphis was where he ultimately belonged and decided to go back to his roots. Like many children that grew up on the streets of Memphis, Lontrell too fell into a life of crime. It was all too normal for him. He was out on the streets allegedly assaulting people at a very young age, but when you think about it, you could chalk it all up to the hard life on the streets get into that life of crime just because that's all they know it's all they seen the ones that make it out of this life tend to stay out of it that's why there's so much focus on making it out of the streets especially in today's world where you can actually get to have opportunities that will effectively pull you out of that hard life that's exactly what happened with Lontrell. In early 2019, Lontrell took on a stage named Pooh Shiesty and released his first single called Hell Night featuring Big 30. Even though it was his first single, it got a lot of attention encouraging Pooh to keep going and keep making music. The following year, he came out with his street hits like Shiesty Summer and ABCGE. These singles were enough to turn some important heads, one of which was Gucci Mane. Gucci thought that Pooh had the potential to make it big, so he signed him onto his record label 1017 Records, along with Atlantic Records in 2020. Just a few singles in and this guy was already with the big guys. He didn't just make it in and sit around on the bench, he was out there, front and center, for almost everything Gucci was releasing. It all started off with the song Still Remember, which really put Pooh Shiesty on the map for most people. With Back in Blood featuring Lil Durk, he shot into new levels of fame that people weren't really expecting from an artist that was so new. Because of all of that hard work he put in, he wasn't just an artist anymore. Gucci Mane literally considered him as his own little brother. It was clear that if Pooh kept doing what he was doing, he'd be an unstoppable force. He made it bigger than pretty much anyone that had come up in the last two years span. But that's the key here. He was supposed to keep going the way he was, but he didn't. He was still a man and loved waving a gun around even though he didn't need to. Everyone knows that Pooh Shiesty has already been a sneakerhead, but on October 13th, 2020, he was allegedly going to buy some high-end shoes from an exclusive reseller in Bay Harbor Islands, Florida. Men's shoes can get fairly expensive, so it's not uncommon for people to want to score a good deal on them. It seems like that's what Pooh was trying to do. He and the seller agreed to meet outside a condo parking lot to figure the deal out. Pooh got out the car, and a few minutes later, the men at the scene broke into absolute chaos. There was gunfire, and shortly after, the men dispersed, and Pooh along with his crew fled the scene. When the cops got there, they found two men that had been shot and had to be taken to the hospital immediately. The main problem here was the fact that at this point, the cops didn't know who the person that shot the men and ran away was. That's because Pooh and his crew came in a rented car, so it wasn't that easy to trace it back immediately. They had to get the information from the rental company on who had given him the very unique highlighter green car. It was confirmed later on that the rapper did in fact rent the car and that he was the one that allegedly shot the men. One of the biggest identifiers here was the fact that as Pooh ran away, he dropped a bag full of $40,000, but that part really wasn't visible in the security footage they found of the whole event. 
So how did the authorities figure out who did it? Well, they analyzed the individual bank notes and then compared them to the notes Pooh had been flexing on his Instagram. The serial number on the notes matched, and since he had also posted a lot of pictures with the car he had rented, it was clear that the information the cops were getting was correct, and it was Pooh on the scene, and it was him that ran away after shooting the two men. After identification was confirmed, Pooh was arrested, but had his own story ready to go. He told the cops that he just went to get the shoes, but the men tried to steal the money he had brought instead, and then they shot the first bullet. He was only acting in self-defense when he shot them back. In the panic of it all, he dropped the bag and fled for his life, not just the scene of the crime. That didn't really end up going over so well though, and he was still charged for the armed robbery along with aggravated battery with the weapon, plus aggravated assault with a firearm and petty theft for the shootout. However, he was released from custody that same day. You'd think that Pooh would thank his lucky stars at this point and not even come close to guns with the 10 foot pole. But that's not how things went. He just can't get away from the straps, man. Less than a year after the initial arrest, Pooh was arrested again, and this time because of something insanely stupid. While performing at a nightclub in Northwest Miami Dade, Pooh started waving his gun around. He was doing so as a part of his act, but it didn't really go over well with the guards on the scene because you're not supposed to be doing that. When they came over and told him to put the gun away, he refused and started waving the gun in their faces instead. All of that went a little too far and after the guards had it with Pooh, things escalated and Pooh ended up shooting one of the guards allegedly. There was a few conflicting stories floating around at this point. Some said that Pooh was robbed on stage, that someone had taken money right out of his pocket. The number we're talking about here is around $40,000, but Pooh denied that on his Instagram story. Regardless, he did shoot a guard and had to be arrested for it anyway. He was escorted out of the club and handed over to the authorities who arrested him and took him into custody. Now things got a little shady here too. For starters, the guard that was shot, at first he was very clear about everything that happened. He said that Pooh shot him while flailing wads of cash around, but a few hours after Pooh's arrest, he miraculously forgot everything and couldn't clearly remember what happened, rendering his initial statement as useless. Normally when this happens, the person that's arrested gets to make it out of the whole ordeal scot-free, but that's not what happened with Pooh. He was held in jail, and then he saw the judge for his case, and the bond was set at $10,000. Entitled to a bond, the standard bond is $10,000, and that's what I'm setting. The $10,000 bond with a hold for the division judge, case number... Hold him for case number F-20-14135B, and you'll see your judge tomorrow, 9 a.m., all right? Thank you. And he was supposed to see another judge for his pending Miami shootout case as well. Everyone thought he'd be out in minutes because that's what happened last time for the same case. But this time, things didn't go his way like they had months before leading up to this. When he saw the judge, seeing that he had just gone from waving his gun around shooting one person to the next, there had to be serious consequences. On July 8, 2021, Judge ordered that Pooh Shiesty be held without bond for the case pending trial. Even at that point, everybody thought he'd make it out of the whole thing once the case wrapped up, but that didn't happen either. On January 4th, 2022, he pleaded guilty to federal conspiracy charges, and he was looking at spending eight years in prison. However, when it came to sentencing four months later, he got 63 months instead, which is five years and three months. This was a pretty shocking turn of events to say the least because of the way he had been weaseling his way out of the trouble for the past couple years. But then again, if you do the crime, you have to do the time at some point. The question that lies in front of us now is what's gonna happen to Pooh Shiesty's career when he gets out? Well, with the era of technology, there's a lot that one can do to keep their career going while locked up. Pooh announced that he's gonna be dropping a mixtape with a lot of major artists. It's likely that it's just material that was unused from his earlier releases, being mixed in with stuff from other rappers. But not only that, but he's had an NFT drop with Web3 streetwear brand Smiles too. That alone will keep him relevant for the next year or two. Granted, he stays on his best behavior, he'll definitely be home a couple years early. But if he doesn't, and the world moves on without him, chances are he might not be able to stay relevant enough because of how short his career actually was. But all that depends on what he's like when he's out and the industry he returns to. It's possible that he might just be even bigger than he was before or completely disappear at the end and end up being one of those forgotten rappers and has-beens that come and go throughout time. Well, there you have it. Stay smart, stay alert, and stay real. I'm out, y'all.